Darcy has now taken her relationship to the next level with her man, Georgie. Guys, what is up? Happy Tuesday. Oh my God, it's only Tuesday, but happy Tuesday, you guys. I hope you're having an amazing week. Last Sunday, the new episode of Darcy and Stacy was on, and I just don't know why, but for some reason, this new Darcy and Stacy show has become like my Monday night routine. Every Monday night, because there's no 90 Day Fiance on, and there's really not any other good shows, I don't believe. Maybe there is, so let me know in the comments, but as far as I'm aware, there's not really any good TV on on Monday night, so I record the episode of Darcy and Stacy and I rewatch it, and it is just for some reason still pulling me in. I feel like I'm in The Godfather. Remember in The Godfather when they say, just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in? I can't stop watching this ridiculous show. And now, believe it or not, Darcy has taken the next step with her new man, Georgie, by moving in with him. Now, let me just preface and say, no, no, no. No, he is not moving in to her home that her dad bought. Because if you guys don't know, Darcy's dad, come to find out in 2005, my roommate actually researched it, in 2005, Darcy's dad did buy them that home, beautiful house in Connecticut. So Stacy and Darcy and Darcy's two kids and probably Stacy's two kids live there too. But Darcy's dad has a rule that no man can live in the house. So no Jesse, no, none of these men can live there. So Stacy and Florian, they had to go get their own place. And now because Darcy is constantly trying to one-up her sister, now she says, oh, I'm lonely, I'm sad, I want Georgie to move in with me and quarantine with me during all of this madness. So what does Darcy do? Darcy picks up and leaves her two kids to go to like an Airbnb hotel style place and quarantine and stay there with Georgie. Now, I mean, the number first thing we have to talk about, number one, is I said that right, she left her kids. Her kids are now being watched by their grandpa, Darcy's dad, which you can agree, you can disagree. I am going to honestly disagree. I think that is not cool. I think that is horrible. I think she's like, you know, showing that her that this new man is more important than her two kids. I'm not saying that is her motive or that's her incentive, but I feel like as a kid, that's how I would take it. And I think that's just really rude. These are two youngerish girls or teenagers. They probably want to be close to their mom. And now their mom is on national television moving in with a man that she has only gone on two dates with. And yes, once again, I said that right, two dates. Now, I kind of thought that Georgie and Darcy have hung out or gone on several dates, but according to Georgie in this last episode, he was saying that him and Darcy have only been on two dates, and now this is technically their third date. But it's like he's moving in with her. It's not even really a date at this point. He is completely moving in for the time being. So it is just unbelievable. So we got to see Darcy go to this new suite. Of course, it is the exact same suite hotel apartment building that Stacy and Florian are living in. I think this it's right next to each other. So of course, they're going to be together a lot. And, and maybe this stuff was just for the show. Maybe the show really pushed them to move out and kind of be closer together. I don't know. It just seems like way, 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 way too soon. I mean, I feel like me personally, I move incredibly fast in relationships because I, I just do. But I don't know anyone that has ever moved in with someone on the third date. That is just way too much. So Darcy and Georgie, they are moving in and they did move in. And at first glance, it seemed okay. I honestly have no spoilers. I don't know if any of you guys have any spoilers of what really happened with their relationship. I don't know if they're still together. I don't know if they got engaged. I don't know if they broke up. If I had to guess, I would likely say that they are still together and they are dating. Maybe Darcy dumped him. Maybe he dumped her. Maybe they're still together. I don't really know. Darcy has posted kind of dark and weird, mysterious stuff on her Instagram lately, so maybe she's single. I really have no idea, but I feel like if there was one man in this whole universe that would be able to tolerate Darcy and be able to listen to her annoying this and the clothes and the talking and all that crap, I feel like it would be Georgie. For some reason, this Georgie guy just completely seems to idolize Darcy, and he just like really seems to be into all the same crap that she's into. The expensive clothes, the this, the romantic stuff, all this stuff, they seem to kind of actually 
have a lot in common. I honestly just think George is just, just a, you know, as ridiculous, if not even more ridiculous than Darcy. So they were eating strawberries. They were doing this. They were doing that. They, you know, it was ridiculous, but they appeared to be having a good time. Keyword, appear, because I did get to see in a sneak peek for an upcoming episode that Darcy said something went down with Georgie while they were quarantining together that she hasn't told anyone. She hasn't even told the producers, and now she's going to let us know. So I don't know what it is. I don't know what happens, but I do know for some crazy odd reason, I am incredibly excited. And then we also got to see the woman that was romantically with Florian. She reached out to Darcy again on the last episode, two episodes ago. Her and Darcy FaceTimed. They got into a little bit of one of these. They were going back and forth. And then Darcy, I think she blocked her on everything, social media, her number, whatever. Okay, well, this time, this woman emailed, supposedly, she emailed Darcy saying, hey, Darcy, just, you know, one last chance. I just want to let you know I'm not lying. I'm not against you. I have nothing against you or your sister. The truth is, Florian just lied to me, you, and your sister. And he told me that he was single and one thing led to another when you know clearly he was never single he was still always with Stacy and then this woman sent Darcy a video of her and him and it didn't look very good. Now, I mean, I can't link the video. I don't have the video. If you want to see the video, the video's on the episode. You can check it out there. Let me just say this. If I was Stacy, if I was a woman and I was Stacy and I was dating or engaged to Florian and I saw my significant other in that video, like how Florian was, boom, I would, I'd be done. I don't even care. You know, because Darcy was trying to play it off like maybe it was a joke. Maybe they were just playing around. But in the video, I will describe it to you this way. They were in her bedroom. Okay, and there was a lot of this and this and this and this kind of going on. Do you get where I'm going with this? It wasn't like they were just two old jolly old friends hanging out, having a good old time. There was a, a lot of stuff going on. So Darcy was like, well, they were just joking. That wasn't real. But even if it was a joke, it was way too far. So we got to see a video. It didn't look good. And now I'm pretty much just team not, I don't like Florian. I'm team anti-Florian. I don't like Florian. I think Florian did clearly 100% cheat on Stacy. That video just seals the deal for me. And I think, you know, Stacy deserves to know. But the only problem is, Stacy, while all of this stuff was going on, when Darcy was moving in with Georgie, when, and when Darcy got this video emailed to her, guess what Stacy and Florian went and did? They got married. Now, I don't know why they chose to get married as fast as they did. Maybe the 90 days is really creeping up faster than I thought. They got married on 4 2020, you know, April 20th. They wanted to get married on that date for whatever reason. And so they had a minister literally come to this hotel apartment and stand there and marry them. And they got married. Woohoo! Everyone was excited. Then this minister officiant person went to go sign the marriage license and he said, oh my God, you're in the wrong county. So this is how dumb this show is. They freak out and and Stacy goes, oh my God, It's there's only 30 minutes to midnight. And me and my roommate are watching this thinking, who gets married at 11.30 p.m.? But here they are getting married at 11.30 p.m. in their hotel room. And then, you know, the officiant and Stacy and Florian, they're running over. And she goes, well, we can go to my dad's house because that's in the right county. But let me just say, Stacy doesn't want her dad or her mom or her sister, Darcy, to know that she is secretly getting married. She didn't tell anyone. So what does she do? Because she's freaking out that she doesn't want anyone to know, but she needs to be in that county. So she literally goes up to her dad's door and they stand like right here, like a centimeter away from it, and her and Florine get married right in front of his house. Now, I just don't know if she doesn't want to get caught so much. She's trying to hide so much from her dad and from Darcy and everyone. Why do you get married in front of your dad's house? I get it that it's late. It's like midnight at this point, but still, why would you do that? Wouldn't you just go get married in a parking lot of like a grocery store if you wanted to get married that bad? So it was just unbelievably dramatic. I kind of almost think it might be fake. I don't want to say yes or no. Clearly, Florian and Stacy did illegally get married, so that isn't fake. But just the whole scriptedness of how all of a sudden they were getting married, then it was 11.30, then the officiant saw that, oh my God, we're in the wrong county. It just seemed kind of scripted. But put in the comments below what you guys think. 
For me, with all of this stuff, I'm not surprised that Florian and Stacy did get married. I think Stacy definitely did make the wrong decision because I still think that Florian did her wrong. I think he cheated. But for Darcy and Georgie, I think they're making a god awful decision by quarantining, moving in together. I mean, maybe they'll get to know each other a little bit better, but it just seems way, way, way too soon. Get to know him. Take it slow. Spend time with your family. Like, what is so wrong with that? So I am not a fan of Darcy doing that. I think it was uncalled for. I think it was just flat out wrong and weird and just way too soon. But we will have to wait and see what exactly goes down when they are living together. Maybe they'll start to have a little bit of fighting. Maybe we'll start to kind of learn a little bit more. And maybe eventually we'll finally learn this big dramatic secret that Darcy has been hiding from us about Georgie. And guys, we are not done for the day. We have more stuff with 90 Day Fiance, and this time it is with Ji Hoon. We all know him. We all remember him. Ji Hoon and Devin, obviously, they are separated. They aren't legally divorced, but they are separated. And Devin has been kind of coming out and sharing her side to the story on what went down. You know, John Yates has been sharing some kind of insider stuff, and we haven't heard a peep of a word from Ji Hoon. Well, yesterday, or maybe even this morning, actually, Ji Hoon, he shared his side to the story, and it's pretty surprising. Now, Ji Hoon literally shared 12 separate screenshot text paragraphs on his social media sharing his side to the story. He was kind of doing a Q&A. Now, I could stand here and read all 12 of them, but because I have the, you know, reading level of like a second grader, I think this video would go way, way, way too long. But because I love you guys all so much, I figured I might as well read some of the kind of more interesting, entertaining ones. The first one literally just says, okay, everyone that's wondering, here's my side to the story. I have been quiet, but this is what has really been going on on my side. The first one that was interesting was it says, Devin paid all the expenses in Korea. Ji Hoon says, it's true. Unlike the broadcasting, there is a different profit from YouTube, so I don't have to work. I believed that because of what she told me, but I knew that the revenue was not affordable for my family and I, and I decided to go back to work. My family used the money we earned from working together. In Korea, we all work together to help support each other. It is the Korean culture. And then Devin was saying she was trying to reach out to Ji Hoon's parents, but Ji Hoon says, you know, that it's a lie. He said, my parents never once heard from Devin. Korea can get records if it is commissioned by a telecommunication company. I can prove it. Then he said that Devin is saying that Devin tried to co-parent, but Ji Hoon refused. Ji Hoon says, it's a lie. She told me that she would send pictures of my son to me. What's the use of me if I'm going to look at pictures of my son? So at the time, feeling so low and depressed, I started to think maybe I should just give up Young if I could only see the picture of him. Then the line application app that we communicate on mistranslated and translated as I can't raise the son and that I refuse to see any pictures. It actually meant to say that I really wanted to meet with my son. It is not easy when we both have a different language. Okay, that kind of seems kind of odd. I know a lot of this stuff is kind of broken English because obviously we all know English is not Ji Hoon's first language, but that seems kind of odd and kind of weird. He then goes on and on and on. He's sharing his side to the story. I'm not standing here. I'm not taking Devin's side. I'm not taking Ji Hoon's. I am neutral in the middle. This is what they're both saying. Obviously, and it kind of sucks with both of their stories, I feel like they're kind of just completely polar opposites, which that, that usually happens when there's a breakup. Everyone has a different side to their story. So we'll likely never know the truth. It is unfortunate that they weren't allowed to do the tell-all because I would like to hear from both of the sides. And a lot of you guys have been telling me to try to get Devin and Ji Hoon on my channel. I don't know if that is possible, but I would absolutely love to. So maybe I'll reach out to them, I don't know. But yeah, you know, it's just a, it's a, it's a horrible situation. Obviously, Devin has moved on. I don't know if Ji Hoon's ever gonna see his son ever again. I really have no idea. But that is a bit and piece of his side of the story. If you want to read everything he had to say, I'll put a link above or below this video to his Instagram account and you can check out the post for yourself. Well guys, that is basically it for the day. Not a heck of a lot going on. There is other stuff actually kind of going on in the 90 Day Fiance world with Britney and Yazin. And Britney is doing a lot of this and a lot of this and a lot of other stuff too. If you, you can, I'm not gonna get super into detail with it, but if you wanna check out, check out John Yates' Instagram account. He has been posting religiously on the topic. Basically, Britney has been posting a lot of videos of her doing a lot of different 
stuff. To each their own, she can do whatever she wants to do, but she has definitely been getting a lot of heat for the stuff she has been doing lately and a lot of the words she has been using. I'm kind of staying out of it. Once more comes out, I'll probably share more of the story, but that's basically all I know for now. But definitely check out John Yates because he has been posting a ton on it recently. Well, guys, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I heard from, honestly, kind of a lot of you guys that The Real Housewives of Potomac on a couple nights ago was pretty good. I might be watching that tonight. Fingers crossed, maybe, because seriously, like nothing is on on Tuesday night. But I will keep you guys up to date. I will let you guys know. But definitely, if you did enjoy this video, please make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to comment below your thoughts. And I would mean the world to me if you hit that like or follow button below this video. Well, thank you guys all so much for watching and make sure to stay tuned for many more videos.